Hello, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today's guest is Dr. Catrice Pereira. She's the superintendent of the Gresham Barlow School District. Dr. Pereira, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Monica, for having me today. It's my pleasure. You know, as the leader of the Gresham Barlow School District, you carry responsibility for the students, the faculty, the administration, and, and probably other school staff for about 22 schools. Does that sound right? Um, we have 18 of our comprehensive schools and then four um, charter schools that are associated okay. with our district. Okay, and that's kindergarten through high school. Absolutely. Well, that's a huge job by, by any standards, um, but the COVID-19 situation has kind of added another unwelcome layer to the to this whole um, to your to your job so let's start right off by asking what the school closures mean to the district well um, you know when things like this happen are unprecedented unprecedented times you really know what never know what the long-term impact will be um, however uh, because we don't know that uh, what we have focused on with our schools being closed is keeping everyone healthy and safe. Um, and this last two weeks or so, we've been reconnecting with our families, uh, trying to make sure that we have supplemental um, learning opportunities for our students, uh, making sure that we have resources for our staff as well. Um, because again, this impacts more than just our students not being here. Our staff are also coping with you know, not having that interaction with their colleagues and or their students. And so we've been trying to make sure that uh, priority one, the whole safety um, and social emotional piece of our students and our, our staff are um, well taken care of. That, that's a tough thing to do, especially the social emotional well-being of, of people that when you can't actually see them face to face and, you know, except like this. And, um, and, and the students, I mean, they, some of those students rely on their teachers for uh, a lot of their emotional support and for their counseling. Uh, there's also the food situation. You know, you've been working on that, I know, with the, they, a lot of those students no longer have access to, to breakfasts and lunches. Yes, absolutely. You are so right on that. Um, and I like to say that, you know, we have to take care of Maslow's before we take care of Bloom's. Maslow's hierarchy of needs before the Bloom's instructional pieces. Um, and because if you don't, you won't, it doesn't matter what kind of curriculum you have or how you deliver the instruction, it won't work. Um, and so that whole ensuring safety and wellness of our faculty, staff, and students. Uh, with our students, we have several students, as you mentioned, uh, with food insecurities. Uh, we have several students who do not have that, uh, a home or they're homeless or they identify themselves as houseless. Um, and so we have continued to uh, serve meals twice a day um, for our students in, in partnership with Sodexo, who's our food uh, nutrition uh, partner, as well as um, first student who has our um, contract with student services uh, transportation. And so over the last two weeks or so, they've served almost 20,000 meals um, to our students. Um, in our communities, we have over 30 different, uh, sorry, actually 44 sites now uh, that we are delivering food to. Um, and again, twice a day, that's breakfast and lunch. Um, and if anyone would like to know more details about that, where the locations are, et cetera, um, definitely have that information available on our website. But ensuring that we're doing those types of things that keeps our students, you know, not necessarily interacting with each other, but at least getting them up and out of the house uh, to come out and get some meals. And, and um, it's been a really, really, I know families are having a really tough time. Um, and we would love to have them in our buildings and teaching and growing and learning them. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we are going to follow and adhere to the governor's orders. Right, you don't really have a choice on that. And I, I imagine that's yeah. for the best. But it's it's hard. It's hard for everybody, I know. Um, and I would encourage, you mentioned the website. I would encourage everybody that has questions to do to go to your website because it's it's really got a wealth of information about, about uh, what the school district is doing. Uh, which brings me to the, my next question, which is, you know, we talked about having to take care of their, you know, their safety and their well-being, first of all, but schools, you know, that's your primary thing is to educate your students. So since you're not able to do that, I, I know there's something called distance learning that is that you're going to be looking at. What, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how that's going to work? Absolutely. Um, so we began with the supplemental learning. Uh, which is just reconnecting with students and giving them opportunities to refresh their memory about a learning that has already occurred in the classroom. The digital, um, not the digital, but the distance learning uh, will be in a blended format, both, both um, digital, online, um, as well as options of 
different modes of communications, phone calls, uh, videos, and we're hoping to partner with you all to also deliver some lessons and opportunities for our students to learn. Um, but we're also working this week to deploy. We actually begin tomorrow deploying, um, I think we have about 3,500 of our Chromebooks that we are delivering to uh, students tomorrow. There'll be pickup um, spots throughout the district and our students have already been notified as to where they need to go and what they need to do. Um, and basically they need to have their student ID number um, and parents need to log into parent view in order to sign off on their permission for their students to retrieve those items. Um, but again, you know, that whole digital connection piece, um, it helps, but it doesn't, um, it, it lacks that human or intangible human interaction that we're all so used to that kids get on a regular basis in a school building. Um, but being able to deliver education and learning opportunities for our seniors um, is really something that we are all really concerned about. Um, however, ODE, our uh, Oregon Department of Education, has been really working uh, around the clock trying to make sure that we have a statewide um, opportunity for a graduation requirements as well as grading, et cetera. So, um, and I've been fortunate to be a part of some of those committees, which is, has been outstanding getting the information firsthand. I bet it is. And, and mentioning the seniors, I feel so bad for some of those seniors. I mean, that's got to be really tough. That's your last year and so many fun things that happen at the end of the year. And it's just a really important time. So, you know, I got to gotta hand it to them. They've got a, they got a tough road, but, you know, they're, they're tough kids and they'll, they'll probably come out fine. So is there anything else that we should know um, about what's going on at the district that you want to share with us? Well, you know, again, we're preparing for a historic shift um, and I'm both excited and concerned uh, about those things because it gives us an opportunity to do some things differently, um, but concerned that we can't do it as consistently as we would like to be able to do it right now because it is something that obviously we're, it, that's ever evolving. Um, but for our seniors, I want them to know, from me to them, that every educator in this district cares about their future and cares about the progress they have as learners. Um, and I would challenge them to reflect within. They've had 12 years of an amazing experience. They've made lots of great friends. They've been taught by some of Oregon's best teachers. Um, and I don't want them to lose those memories based on what is happening and currently now. And I would challenge them to ask their, themselves, what could they do today or in this moment of vulnerability for all of us, what could they do that will positively impact their future selves and they'll thank themselves for doing so in the next year or so. I and so with that advice. as a parent, I'm, 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 my heart is heavy uh, for our seniors. They, you know, not being able to participate in all the traditional ceremonies that we've all had the pleasure of be, being a part of, but I want them to not focus on what they're maybe losing out on and focus more so on what can be and what can they do. I love that. That's, that's a great, uh, great perspective. And I, and I hope they take you up on that. And I know you're all about embracing change and, and that you're <clears throat> not afraid of, uh, of going in new directions. So I, I'm glad that you're at the helm here. And, and uh, I have a good feeling that Gresham Barlow School District will do just fine. So thanks so much for being on the show today, Dr. Pereira. Thank you, Monica. And thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about our district. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you everyone for watching. And uh, for all of you at home from Metro East, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.